It's a balmy August Eve here from Lima Spartan Stadium, and we are ready to go for week two of the high school football season here on WOSN. It's the Holy War tonight, Lima Central Catholic hosting Delphus St. John's. Good evening, everyone. It's like wiffle ball all over again. I'm Patrick Hamler, <laughs> Dave Bowen here next to me, looking forward to a terrific matchup. Uh, these two teams, of course, have uh, met numerous times over the previous years. Of course, last year's matchup was a come from behind win for St. John's and uh, we're looking forward to a terrific matchup here tonight Dave Bowen. Yeah Patrick great to be your wingman this evening and yeah you talk about the series LCC has won 17 times St. John's 8 there's been one tie and as you mentioned St. John's with the win last night they broke up or last year they broke a five game winning streak by the T-Birds last year. We had to come back in order to do that as we take a look at the keys of the game and starting with the Blue Jays uh, what are the Blue Jays looking for in order to pull off a win tonight? Well, Coach Schulte would like to continue the momentum of the victory from last week. They beat Sidney Lehman. They're 1-0, and they want to get to 2-0 and and feel good about entering MAC League play against Versailles and Marion Local in the next two weeks. Secondly, we need to pay homage to the big Gugglies, as Keith Jackson would say, the Hall of Famer. Josh Mueller, he's a three-year starter for the Blue Jay offense, and this group will need to pave the way for long, sustained drives, keeping the ball out of the hands of the T-Bird offense. And then they got to keep the rock in front, the pigskin in front. The Blue Jay defense will be challenged by the speed of LCC. No deep balls from the arm of Brady Parker to his talented receivers, Milan Cowens and Lawson Flores, nor, lo nor long runs by Matthew Quatman. That'll be the recipe for success for the Blue Jays. And before we get to the national anthem here, taking a look at the Thunderbird keys to the game, let's go through those real quick. Well, you got to look at fulfilling the cliche. They say the greatest growth and improvement for a football team happens during the seven days from week one to week two. LCC needs to correct errors from last week that occurred via several penalties and mental errors. I'm sure this has been a point of emphasis going into tonight's contest. Secondly, hey, we got to pay homage to the big ugly. Glaze Part 2, as number 75 for the T-Birds is a three-year starter. That's Gianni McKee. Coaches always say you have to win in the trenches, and McKee anchors an outstanding offensive line, which will need to open holes for Matthew Quatman and let the workhorse do the plowing. Who's the workhorse? Yeah, it's number four, Matthew Quatman. Look for the T-Birds to get back to basics tonight, and that starts and ends with number four getting a heavy dose of carries. Quatman has an incredible work work ethic as a leader for his team and his talent and intestinal fortitude will need to be on display if LCC is going to find the winning column. Looking forward to a great matchup tonight. Those are your keys to the game. We will have the kickoff coming up in the Holy War between LCC and DSJ when we come back here on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. We are underway here from Lima Spartan Stadium. LCC kicking, or receiving the kick rather, taking it out to the 32-yard line. That's where the rugby scum comes crashing down. And the T-Birds will start off with the football at first, and that's going to be sophomore Brady Parker leading the offense back in. Not Carson Parker. Parker, Carson graduated last year. This is his younger brother, and uh you, you, you can't help but think that the standards might be just as high because it's a Parker. It's a Parker, but th that can be an unfair comparison. we got to let the sophomore grow. And, again, he, he had some issues last week at times and that how they fell short to Shawnee. But I'm sure, again, that Coach Pulte and this coaching staff has really coached up Brady as well as the whole LCC squad to be ready for tonight. Parker in the gun at first down. The pitch going out to Lawson Flores, and Flores picking up four as he takes it down to the 36. We see it on the Web Insurance Agency replay. Nice block by his teammate, Matthew Quatman. We're going to be calling his name a lot when he's carrying the pig skin tonight, but there he sets up a nice block and gives his teammate, Lawson Flores, a nice gain. Second and four. That was the first play of this Pats Donuts and Cream first quarter. And as you said, David, expect to hear Matthew Quatman's name called quite a bit as we got a jump and an encroachment. 
And that's going to give them five more yards and probably going to give them a Lodox Jewelry first down. Jackson Hurston jumps across the line. Just a little bit of anxiousness there from the big fella. He's a junior, 6'2", 295. He's who you want right there in front of the football, but you don't want him to take off early. Anticipated the snap and a five-yard penalty results. So a fresh set of sticks for LCC. Parker pitching that out. Michael Quatman. Quatman finding a seam. Has a lot of truly first down and then some as he is pushed out at the 44-yard line. So two offensive plays, one to the left, one to the right, nothing straight up the middle. LCC gaining positive yardage, getting that quickness out in the flats, running the ball, not throwing it, and being very successful here in the early going. So far, seeing the pitches, as you said, probably going to see how much they can advance the ball running at first before they have to put the ball up in the air and try that. First and 10, Parker, play action, looking long, has Cowens and just overshoots him, had cut the defenders, and that is going to be second down. Drew Boggs and Braden Pullman there on the coverage for uh, DSJ. Yeah, Brady Parker, you're not going to question his arm strength. He threw some deep passes last week. Uh, was 11 for 24, two TDs, 102, 192 yards, but he did have two interceptions and went for it all right there. Gets him behind the chains a little bit, second and 10. Ball still on the 44. In motion, and Flores gets the pitch right up the middle. Picks up a couple of yards, and a helmet comes loose. Here on the Web Insurance replay, no head in it, thank goodness. <laughs> really good defense there by the St. John's uh, defensive line. Good, good assignment defense there. Plugs up the hole. No gain on the play. I'll give it a yard, Patrick. Okay. So they'll say third and nine. And Matthew Quatman has not carried the football yet. And that one of my keys was <laughs> that he should get it a lot. And he hasn't touched it yet, but uh, we'll see what uh, LCC does here. Michael had touched it. We'll see what they do here on third and long. Quatman is going to get the pitch after going in motion. Has some blockers out across the 40. Pushed out of bounds to the 31. Good for another Lodix Jewelry. First down and a pickup of 12. So they go... Left, right, up the middle, and now left again with their running place thus far. Really finding some success out there on the perimeter. You got to give credit to the offensive line for not holding when that ball's coming around the edge, That's a, especially early in the season. That's something you see quite often, the offensive linemen holding their, their player not occurring thus far. Ball just shy of the 31-yard line handoff. Once again, this is Matthew Quatman, and nowhere to go as he has bottled up in the backfield, possibly for a loss. Riley Mueller there on the stop for the Blue Jays. Yeah, Riley Mueller fights off his block and then comes in and then gets some help from his teammate, number nine, Connor Gagne. Good defensive play for St. John's. LCC not finding anything up the middle here in the early going. So they'll get him back to the line of scrimmage. No lot. Well, a loss of one on the play. Second and 11. Parker looking mid-level. Has the completion. Flores to the 24-yard line. That's a good safe pass for LCC right there. Get some confidence with the sophomore quarterback. They make the connection. Third and what? Four, five, you're in two down territory right here, I believe, Patrick. I think you're right. I don't think there's any reason to entertain kicking the uh, ball just yet. That would be Matthew Quatman in any case. Third and four. Play action. Parker flushed out of the pocket, rolls to his left. Just slings that one, gets the completion to Cowens at the 15, and pushed out of bounds at the 10 for a Lodix Jewelry first down, and they're in the rural first red zone. The Web Insurance Agency instant replay. Brady Parker, he slings this one. Patrick finds his teammate, 
Number 46 for St. John's doesn't know how he didn't come up with that. That's T.J. Wirtz. LCC all the way down to what? The two-yard line, three-yard line? It's on the five, I yeah, believe. Yeah, I think they got marked on the five-yard yeah. line. That's where Cowan stepped out. And that's a Lodix Jewelry first down. And LCC with a really solid drive here to open this game. LCC doing a nice job mixing it up. And now Parker slings this one out to the corner. And Quatman is in for the touchdown. A record lawn and landscape touchdown. And it's six points for LCC. Finds him out in the flats. What a beautiful drive for the T-Birds to open up this game. They strike pay dirt first. LCC 6, St. John 0. Michael Quatman on the reception. And now Matthew Quatman will attempt the extra point. Snap, hold, kick is up, and it is good. It's a 7-0 lead for Lima Central Catholic. We'll take this time out and be right back after the eyesight of Lima and Delphus Extra Point here on WOSN. Our first quarter sponsor is Pat's Donuts and Cream. Visit any of our four area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC, open daily. And our red zone sponsor is Rural First, the leader in rural lending. Rural First can help you live closer to what matters. Patrick, LCC comes out and establishes themselves right away here. Again, coming off a loss, uh, losing to St. John's last year in this game. They couldn't have started this game in any better way. A 64-yard drive in 3 minutes and 31 seconds. Taking 10 plays to do it, and now LCC will kick off. St. John's will now have the football for the first time tonight. Ball fielded at the 5-yard line and a collision there at the 25 to the 30, and that is where Delphi St. John's will take over on down. I think that was Braden Pullman on the return for the Blue Jays. So now LCC is, they've had the punch here to start things off. Let's see if the Blue Jays can counter punch here with their first offensive drive of the game. That will bring out Drew Boggs, the senior quarterback. 192 yards and three touchdowns in last week's win over Sidney Lehman. And we'll get started with the handoff. Nope, it's going to be a keeper, and Boggs fooled everybody, and he is gone for a Ricker. Lawn and landscape touchdown, 70 yards to the house. Punch, counter punch, I guess that sums it up right there, Patrick. One play. And as you said, a 70-yard run, that is something St. John's picked up on film. They knew what they wanted to run the first play. They picked something up in the LCC defense, and they executed it to perfection. Well, that's always a very easy drive to summarize. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 70 yards in nine seconds. And now the extra point will be attempted by Drew Boggs. The eyesight of Lima and Delphus extra point. As the Blue Jays, extra point away from tying this one up, and they will. Well, it only took nine seconds for Delphi St. John's to get on the board, and that's exactly what they do. We are all tied up at seven here on WOSN. Welcome back, our instant replay brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. One play, 70 yards, just how you drew it up. That's how Delphi <laughs> yeah. St. John scores a Drew Boggs touchdown on the keeper, and we are all tied up at seven. All tied up, and uh, maybe to uh, paraphrase, we've got ourselves what appears to be a shootout at the uh, Spartan Stadium Corral here in the early going. Clean football, have not had a penalty in the game yet. Good execution, good fundamentals offensively for both squads. So LCC will go back on offense. Having to corral the ball is Cowens at the eight yard line. 
And hit at the 20, and just shy of the 20-yard line is where he'll be stopped, and that's where they will take over for this next drive. Riley Mueller on the stop for St. John's. So it's going to be interesting to see. I think we're going to continue to see uh, LCC work the sidelines a little bit, try and get that speed out around that St. John's defense. Let's we'll see what adjustments the Blue Jays have made. LCC with a great drive, able to really march down the field in a little over three minutes on their first drive. Uh, so you're right. We'll see what defensive adjustments the Blue Jays could make, and I'm sure LCC would like to see the you know, second verse, same as the first. We'll see how they come out here with their next drive. Ball just shy of the 20. Parker pitches it on first down. Looking to stretch the defense. This is Quatman, and Quatman is wrapped up. Riley Mueller there in on a stop for, L for DSJ. Yeah, good pursuit by Riley Mueller to cut through the, the bodies, if you will, to get to the ball handler and take him down for just a one-yard gain. So we've seen that play a couple times, that formation at least, trying to stretch the defense out. You have to wonder if that, maybe that's going to set something up later or maybe they just work the edges, see if they can find some gaps there in the defense. Definitely showing a lot of respect to that interior defense for the Blue Jays. Making some adjustments there now, second down. The pitch this time is going to go inside and not finding much of anything there. Brought down at the 25-yard line is Michael Quatman. And that was yeah. uh, Alex Martz, among others, in there on the stop. Yeah, Austin Schaefer in on the tackle as well. Okay. Good assignment defense. Big third down here in the early going for the T-Birds. Third and five, as you said, coming up. Ball in the 25. Three wide receivers to the right. One man in the backfield for Parker. Parker rolling out right, but we're going to have a flag. And a false start is going to go against the T-Birds. And that is our first flag of the game, and that's a good time to introduce our officiating crew. Our referee is William Horvath, umpire William Brown, line judge Barry McCullough, lineman Vincent Ozier, back judge Stephen Johns. Five-man crew tonight. You can go to six men now, and it's a recommendation by the OHSAA, but one of the concerns administratively for athletic directors is uh, we're fighting to get enough crews now, and if you go to six man, we lose a guy, and that could cause some crews not to be available on Friday nights. Parker looking for a man here on third and long, and Cowens was the intended receiver and just missed the connection there around the 49-yard line. And we do have a penalty on the play as well. I think it's holding against LCC, and I believe we'll see the Blue Jays decline that penalty. That is my guess. So there's the signal, officially a hold, and Coach Todd Schulte will decline that penalty and force fourth down. So that'll bring in Brady Parker to punt. Andrew bought off your long snapper. Back to receive and problems with the football. They are going to just fall on top of it. Smart idea. Tyler Lindemann doing the honors. And that will put the ball at the 45, and that is where St. John's will start. So St. John's, they racked up 441 total yards last week against Sidney Lehman with a 54-27 victory. Rushing 249. They're already on pace right there with that one-play 70-yard drive. They're going to come out again and look to establish themselves on offense and look to take the lead. Got to believe LCC is going to be looking for uh, any kind of chicanery here as they get back on offense with 6.20 remaining in the first quarter on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. And there's the pitch. This is going to go to Wirtz. Pushing his way through the pile and getting to the 50. And that is that basic offensive play that St. John's has run forever. The pitch and then the quarterback becomes the lead blocker. You just don't see that with many teams, but St. John's has done that uh, throughout their history. Todd Schulte executed that as a player, and he continues to have his team do it as their head coach. Oh, 
Second down, midfield getting the pitch down. This is Wirtz and lowers the shoulder and gets across the 46. And yeah, Wirtz 6'2", 225 pounds. That's a that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of Blue Jay coming at you there at the line. <laughs> yeah, he's rumbling, bumbling, stumbling in there between the tackles. Brings up third and short. And right now, I wouldn't be surprised if you see St. John's run the same play, maybe the other direction. Mono e mano, two yards of turf for a first down. They very well might. Third and short. LCC showing a blitz from the second level. We'll see if that's what they actually want to do. Some adjustment there. And this is going to go to Wirtz. Wirtz, no, it's going to be Boggs once again. Slides, gets enough for the lot of Julie first down. We take a look at the web replay. Yeah, does a nice job going around the left side. We have been very impressed. We've only seen it twice where he has faked the handoff, but both times we thought T.J. Wirtz had the, Indeed we the, did. the pig skin, and he did not. Nice job by Boggs to pick up the first down. Fresh set of downs. The DSJ drive will continue with 439 remaining here in the first quarter. And in motion, here's the snap. Boggs lets this one go and looks like it's going to be complete to the 35-yard line. Pickup of nine on that play. Nice execution there by St. John's. I'll be honest with you, Patrick. I thought that ball skipped off the turf, but the players didn't react that way, so it's obviously my eyesight not in focus. Nice play by St. John's. Playbook opens up. Sure second does. down and one. And you see Boggs trying to Get LCC to jump, I think. And then you have the chess game occurring. The offensive coordinator calling in the play, and then Coach Paldy telling his defense how to adjust. And Boggs is going to keep this one and pushed out of bounds. Nice pursuit there by LCC. He's going to lose one on that play. Yeah, excellent pursuit by the LCC defense there on the right side. Say Carson Hefner was in there on the pursuit. Yeah, he I've, and Austin, uh, nope, excuse me, you're right, Car Carson Hefner does a nice job, brings up third and short. 3.42 left in our first quarter. All tied up at seven, opportunity for the LCC defense to get off the field. Looking to the sideline for the play. And the play clock was running down, and they will take a timeout. Metzger Financial Services timeout. Our first down sponsor tonight, Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South San Inch Street in Van Wert or online at lodix.com. Third and one. Delphi St. John's trying to keep their drive alive with 342 remaining here in the Pats Donuts and Cream first quarter. See if they go with big boy football right. We'll have none of it. Back at the 40 for a loss. Lewis Knotts in there on the stop, getting the TFL. Yeah, Lewis Knotts and a host of others. That pitch play just didn't develop quickly enough. The LCC interior defense breaks through the line and they meet Mr. Wirtz in the backfield. They are going to go for it, it looks like. Maybe trying to draw them off sides here on fourth down. I think that's going to be the case here, just trying to see if they can pull the T-Birds off. Play clock down to three seconds. And there is the flag. So delay a game coming up for Delphi St. John's. <laughs> Drew Boggs talking to his center, Camden Gamble, said, hey, uh, you weren't supposed to hike that. <laughs> Not at all. We're going to back it up five. We'll punt it away. Let's try and pin the, pin the T-Birds back there. But there for a second, Boggs thought he was going to have to make a run. <laughs> but the uh, whistle had blown. I think that's what Cam, Camden Gamble, early season, went off right. of the thought of, uh, uh, I, I got to do something. And thankfully, it was not a misplay for the Blue Jays. Good discipline by the T-Bird defense, and now LCC will get the football back. Ready. 
Ball spotted around the 44 yard line. And the punt is going to roll all the way back into the end zone. Good effort by the Blue Jays to try and down it before it got there, but that will be a touchback. So after some fireworks early on, Patrick, both teams settling in now, both defenses establishing themselves. Two drives for not, one for each squad. T-Birds get it back with 252. I think we need to look for them again to, to work the sidelines a little bit and then maybe Brady Parker finding a man in the middle, in the seam area, and trying to push this ball down the field offensively. Ended up being a seven-play, 11-yard drive for Delphi St. John's. Now LCC gets the football back, and we'll see what they can do with it. Problems with the pitch. That buys the Blue Jays a little time, but still Matthew Quatman doing a nice job getting out to the 24. Here's the web insurance replay. He does a nice job getting around there, making something out of nothing. Defensively on the play, Connor Gagne with the stop. Mishandled snap. Once that timing's off, a lot of weird things typically happen. But in that case, not so much, but a positive play for the T-Birds. Second down and six coming up for Lima Central Catholic. Here's the pitch again. And Quatman having some trouble finding some space. He doesn't really find much of anything. Great pursuit there by number 24, Riley Mueller. Yeah, Riley Mueller, Mueller shot right through on a blitz. And he read it correctly. So they will put them a little bit of a loss on that play. Not a lot, but that also means you didn't get much of anything. They'll be third and six. Look for Parker to put the ball in the air here. Rolls out to the right. Third and six. Parker tucks and runs out to the 27 before he is stopped. TJ Wirtz, down. Yeah, TJ Wirtz on the tackle, the Web Insurance Agency replay. Parker was looking to throw a little bit, and he saw a lot of green space over there. The problem is that Wirtz and teammate number 34, Alex Martz, they closed that green space up, creating a fourth and short. This one, interesting, deep in your own territory. It looks like the T-Birds are going to line up to go for it, Patrick. Would be the first three and out for well, LCC if that's yeah. what they decide to do, although yeah. they are moving back. Parker yep. moving back to punt. But I would be wary of the fake if I were LCC, or if I were DSJ, rather. And the T-Birds do punt it off. At the 36-yard line, across and into plus territory at the 40 Six-yard line, and that is where DSJ will start. Tyler Lindemann with the catch and carry. He's tackled by number 70, Chris Serkovich. Nicely done, but it's going to be first and 10. The war of eating up territory right now is going to the LCC side of the field. We've been on their side of the 50 now for a little bit as St. John's comes out to look to attack now offensively. Third drive of the night coming up for Delphi St. John's. We come up on the final minute of this Pat's Donuts and Cream first quarter. Four wide for St. John's. Wirtz gets it. Nope, take that back. That is number 24. That's Riley Mueller again. I think we know his number by now. There he takes off at the middle for a long, truly first down. Here's the web replay. That's a nice job of going off the right side of that offensive line. We talked about it in our keys to the game. Both offensive lines, veteran in nature, and that time right there, the St. John's offensive line overpowers the defensive front four for LCC. A nice gain. 15-yard run for the Lodox Julie first down, second longest play of the day for Delphi St. John's. And now Boggs back to pass on first down. Pass is complete. Connor Gagne with the catch, close to a first down. It's going to end up with probably about a 
nine-yard completion on that play. And here we see it on the replay. Boggs does a nice job of waiting for his receiver to sit down against that LCC defense. Nice catch and run. Connor Gagne, the senior, he's returning from major knee injury a uh, major knee injury from last year, and it's great to see him out there on the field contributing to his team. Got injured in week five of last season, back since last week, and now here's Miller again trying to stretch the ball out to the 21-yard line. That'll be third down and short. Going off the left side of that offensive line. So where we've seen LCC working the sidelines, the flats, St. John's, they've been running between the tackles, Patrick, and they've been doing it effectively, and that's going to take us to the end of our first quarter. We'll switch sides here with a tie ball game in the Holy War. St. John's 7, Lima Central Catholic 7. We're back after this. Our second quarter sponsor, Pat's Donuts and Cream. Visit any one of their four area locations, including their new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC, open daily. Second quarter of the Holy War here on WOSN. Patrick Hamler, Dave Bowen here with you. Delphi St. John's on the march, looking to punch in another touchdown and take the lead. Started this drive on the LCC 46. Currently at the 21, a third down and one coming up. As it is starting to get a little cooler here at Lima Spartan Stadium. Miller up the middle, going left side, past the 10. Lottis Julie first down, pushed out of bounds at the two-yard line, into the roll of first red zone. Watch Mueller get through here, and he's bumbling and stumbling, and then he's like, I'm just going to have to go straight up the middle now. And then he gets shoved out of bounds. A great run, a great execution again by that St. John's offense, going off tackle. That's big number 74 there at left guard and left tackle 63, Josh Mueller and Jackson Hurston. You really got the Keith Jackson vibe working tonight. <laughs> I expect to hear a, oh, Nettie, here before we're done. We'll see what we can do. All right. Just got to give credit to the, the guys in the trenches. Every head coach talks about how important line play is, but then when it comes to the season, all we hear about are the skill guys. Right. Here is Wirtz on first down. Ball coming out, and I think that's T-Bird football. Here's the web replay as we take a look at this one. Wirtz with the, the football. Number eight for LCC sticks his... Helmet right in there, that's Carson Hefner. He creates the fumble and it is LCC T-Bird football. So they get all the way to the two yard line and give up the football. And the LCC defense coming up with a big time play, halting the St. John's drive. TJ Wirtz, he could just smell that goal line and was doing everything he could to get there. And sometimes when you're thinking that way, you, you forget about ball security, and that's what happened right there. T-Birds, 98 yards away from pay dirt, but they're happy to have the football right now. Parker in the gun, first down. Going to hand it off up the middle, just looking for some space out across the five to the seven-yard line. As Lawson Flores with the carry. I, I, was that, I, mean, I believe it was Matthew Quatman, yep, Quatman, between okay. the tackles. Okay. Again, the numbers are sort of hard to read uh, at times, and Matthew uh, goes up underneath his shoulder pads there in the front a little bit. But when it's going between the tackles, more often than not, it's going to be Matthew Quatman with the football, as we saw right there. That is for sure. Here is second down. And the handoff once again going to Quatman across the 10 to the 12 yard line. We've talked and about a lot of surely first down. Go yep, ahead. We've Go ahead. talked about St. John's running between the tackles. We see it now by LCC more as a game plan to get out of being deep in your own territory, but it's been effective. They're playing big boy football right now. Pick up another first down. Fourth first down of the game for LCC. Man in 
in motion. Parker with the pitch to Michael Quatman, working that far side, met at the 15-yard line, and that is all he will get. And Camden Gable was one of the guys in there on the stop for the Blue Jays. Yeah, that play right there, the whole St. John's defense flowed very nicely to the football. Uh, Michael Quatman, he has a lot of speed coming around that edge. You're not going to bring him down with one guy more often than not. Good gang tackle there by St. John's. Second down and seven. Two wide receivers on the right side, and this is going to be a keeper for Parker and not finding any space as the Blue Jays seal that one up. T.J. Wirtz was in there, among others, and their point is they have the football back. I think his forward progress had been stopped, so LCC is going to maintain possession. But I like the thought of the misdirection play. The only problem was that St. John's was ready for it. They did a right. really nice job defensively there. They're thinking, hey, that's our play. You can't use it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Third down. Parker back to pass, looking for that side pass complete to the 24-yard line. I think they're going to give him the Lodix Julie first down. Nice catch there by number 11. That's Jackson White for LCC. We had a great angle on it. Brady Parker thread that in between three St. John's defenders. And as you said, Patrick, that's a first down for the T-Birds. Started this drive on their own two-yard line. Nothing more that Coach um, Palti would love to see is a long, sustained drive here. Without a doubt, Lottox Jewelry first down. Parker back in the gun. Fakes the pitch, rolling out, looking long. Has a man open and through his hands, incomplete. Pass intended for Caden Falky, number 30. Here's another look at it. Yeah, Caden Falky, he's not going to drop the football like this very often. This is a rarity. They get behind the St. John's defense. That's a key that we talked about in the pregame. St. John's can't allow that to happen. Right there, they are fortunate. J.J., uh, or excuse me, number six for St. John's on the coverage, Austin Schaefer. The drop makes it second and ten. Second and ten. Here's the pitch to Michael Quatman with Matthew blocking, but St. John's with good penetration, still fighting, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage, and it'll be a loss of one. Again, St. John's defensively as a team sniffing out those plays, trying to go around the end. Nice pursuit. That drop pass, they got the T-Birds behind the sticks a little bit, Patrick. And now it's third and 11 with the loss of one on that running play. So that'll make a third down and long coming up for the Thunderbirds as we are under eight minutes remaining in the first half. Faking the pitch, Parker with time, now flushed out, gonna go left and try and get some yardage, lowers the shoulder to the 29 and he will be pushed back. So he's gonna pick up about five yards on that play. It will not be enough for a first down. Not enough for a first down and we have a holding on the play. Let's see what St. John's wants to do here actually felt like the receiver that Parker was looking for, he might have been held out there in the middle of the field a little bit. Brady couldn't find him, and there was a reason for that. But if they don't call it, it didn't happen. Well, that's absolutely right. The official's talking this over. Everyone seems to be acting like it's going to be holding against LCC. You mentioned it's starting to cool down a little bit, Patrick. We've got the shadow of the stadium over the field now. But, yeah, it's very, very warm out there. Uh, St. John's, they have eight players that go both ways. I'm sure they're looking to shuffle players as much as possible. But with their starters, they have eight go both ways. LCC has five that go both ways. And 
within those starting lineups, the St. John's Blue Jays start six seniors, four juniors, and a sophomore on offense, six seniors, five juniors on defense. LCC on offense, four seniors, three juniors, and four sophomores. And on D, four seniors, four juniors, and three sophomores. Well, there you go. There's the breakdown. Penalty declined by the Blue Jays, so that'll bring up fourth down. Looks like the punting unit will be coming in for Lima Central Catholic. And there were a number of schools in the area this week that ended up with early dismissal because of the heat, because there are a lot of uh, school buildings out there that, you know, you go to school mostly when it's cold and they're not equipped with air conditioning to handle that. So the, the cooler it gets, the quicker, uh, the better off we'll all be for it. Here is the punt on fourth down, fielded at the 40, brought out to the 46-yard line, and that's where St. John's will start. Tyler, Tyler Lindemann with another return. And you, the other piece with that, Patrick, is that you know practice was not the normal practice this week either for both of these schools and throughout the region because of the heat. A lot of film work, a lot of shell practice, uh, and shorter practices too, outside anyway, just because of the heat and you want to be fresh come Friday night. Football coaches well accustomed to having to make adjustments. Both these coaches no doubt doing so. Is we have got a tight one here so far at Lima Spartan Stadium, all tied up at seven as we are in the Pats Donuts and Cream second quarter. And the officials will blow this. We're going to have an official timeout. They're discussing things that are happening. Well, hey, if your family moved away and you're still a high school sports fan, tell them about the WOSN channel streaming app. For only $8 a month, you can download it from Roku or Apple TV, or you can sign up at app.wosn.tv. You can catch football contests just like this one. Getting ready to go here on first down. High snap. Boggs is going to keep it. And LCC not buying the fake this time. Boggs able to get a few yards out to midfield, and that's it. We see it on the Web Insurance Agency replay. He's able to make something out of nothing as number 16 is the first one in pursuit for LCC, Xavier Purnell. He meets him in the backfield, but Boggs able to pick up three. Boggs only ran the ball three times last week. He has carried the rock much more than that tonight and has done so effectively as we saw in the first play of the game, a touchdown scamper. And Boggs will hand this one off to Mueller and back to midfield, and that's it. And a flag will come out. A little extracurricular there at the end after the play was blown dead to see her on the web replay. Yeah, number eight, number 54, but number eight for St. John's, Carson Hefner. He had him tackled. The whistle was blown. He got to lighten up there a little bit, and then he drives him to the ground. That's going to draw the personal foul. At least that's my thought, but right now, they're, yeah, I was going to say, it looked like they say, were going to yeah. march it back, but now they're moving in the direction so that's a Lodix Jewelry first down for Delphi St. John's and a significant penalty. That's going to move the ball all the way to the LCC 35. It's a significant penalty because both teams have had to earn everything. It's been a clean game overall, but 15 yards on a penalty, that's big time, especially when you're on the opponent's side of the 50. So first down once again, Boggs. Looking, pass incomplete. Was looking there on the far side for Braden Pullman, number 18. Looks to go to the back shoulder. Really tight window. Excellent defense over there by, I believe that was Mylon Cowens on the coverage. First incompletion for Boggs. Bring up second down. Here's the sweep, looking for that left side, and LCC 
all over it, back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. As going nowhere was Tyler Lindemann, number four. Both teams defensively have really stiffened up with the ball going around the outside. Uh, looked like number 54 for LCC. He had pursuit. That's Lewis Knotts. Might have been held a little bit, but no call, but no gain. Third down. Third and ten. Boggs looking to the sideline. 5.30 and counting left here in the first quarter. First half, rather. Boggs looking. Pass is off the mark. A little miscommunication back yes. there, I think. Yeah. Here's a web replay. Boggs thought his intended receiver was going to go with an out pattern, and he flew up the sideline. He was open. Mm -hmm. Just that they were not on the same page mentally to make that connection happen. Lima Central Catholics, Myron Cowens was the closest to the football on that play. It looks like St. John's is going to punt it away and look to pin LCC deep in their own territory. Boggs your punter. And Boggs will punt it. High punt. Going to try and pin LCC back. It's going to take a bounce. There's a flag on the play as the ball rolls out to the 26-yard line. And I think we're going to see a hold against LCC. See the flag out there at the 19-yard line. Yeah, and this is a... Fish will talk this one over, Dave. Yeah, interesting call I think it's going to be after the punt so therefore it's going to be added to the end of the play so that's going to push the T-Birds back deeper into their own territory after a punt that really had a favorable bounce a mm -hmm. fortuitous bounce for the T-Birds as it came back to the yardsticks where the first down would have occurred if St. John's could have gotten the ball that far down the field. But now it's going to be first and 10 for the T-Birds on their own 14-yard line. That's where they've got it spotted. And that looks like that's where Lyman Central Catholic is going to start this drive. We talked about uh, momentum. You know, St. John's looking to go 2-0. T-Birds trying to pick up the first W of the year. Uh, St. John's 4-6 and six last year did not make the playoffs. LCC 8-4. and four. Just a big game in the early part of the season here for both squads. So much on the line in week two. And with St. John's, their schedule's not going to get any no. easier anytime soon. Nope. They're away at Versailles next week and in Marion Local. I don't know if football... Aficionados have heard of them around here. <laughs> right. Flyers may have heard of them. Here's a nice run on first down. Cowens breaking free to the 40, past the 50, and dropped out of bounds at the 46-yard line. They're going to mark him out of bounds at midfield. A Lodix Julie first down. Hat on the hat at the offensive line. Great play by the T-Birds to spring. Matthew Quatman around that end. He's brought down by Braden Pullman, but not until he flips the field. Well, it's at midfield now. Quatman with a 36-yard run. And that is just the burst Lima Central Catholic needed. And we're going to have a false start. Xavier Purnell, yeah, he gets his hand caught in the cookie jar a little bit. <laughs> Preliminary movement, going to be a five-yard penalty. So that'll back him up five yards, and that'll make it first and 15. Here's the handoff. This is Quatman on first down. Is going to get about seven of it back. Cross to the 48. Nice run off the left side. And another piece that we haven't brought up, LCC, the last four seasons, they have started one and two. And they've had some very successful 
years um, in the last four seasons. They've had some really good teams, some playoff, deep playoff runs. That is something I'm sure Coach Poldy would like to, to change, that slow start. And uh, that's going to happen tonight if they can execute effectively and maybe putting a drive together here to end the quarter on a high with momentum could go a long way to that end. We'll see what they can dial up here on second down and nine under four and a half to go in the first half. This is Quatman once again looking for that far side. Hit at the 46, pushed out to the 45-yard line. That's about it, the third and five coming up. The T-Birds with seven consecutive trips to the playoffs. You talk about St. John's, you talk about state championships. Six times, 10 MAC championships, 57 straight wins. That's a record in For Ohio. now? Yeah, in Ohio <laughs> high school football, but we know that that team from down in Maria Stein, they're looking to threaten that. Here on third down, this is Cowens complete to the 39-yard line and a lot of surely first down. We see it on the Web Insurance Agency replay. Great execution. Mylon Cowens, good route running. Parker throws the ball on his turn. He's going to come out of the game here right now. Got shaken up a little bit. Did Mylon Cowens. Quatman is out of the ball game as well. Matthew Quatman. So, a lot of signals down here on the LCC <laughs> sideline. <Yeah. laughs> Looked like one of the coaches was shooting a three-pointer, and then Coach Paldy wanted to see the clock started. Play clock down to three. I don't know if they're going to get this one off. They will. It's going to be a pitch to Michael way back in the backfield and unable to get anything going. Mueller there on the stop for a loss of two. Yeah, great pursuit by Mueller to come around and get into the backfield. You could almost sense with Quatman out of the game and Cowens out of the game that it was going to be a run to the sideline. And St. John sniffed it out. Right, without a doubt. You look at the guys on the personnel and think, all right, well, who's probably going to get the, the football at uh -huh. this point? And they zeroed in on Michael. And in that case, they were right. 245 and counting left in the first half. Second and 11. Here is the handoff looking up the middle. And Quatman out across the 40 to the 38-yard line. That's five hard yards right there. Runs into a mass of humanity. And everybody goes down, but gets inside the sticks to make it a third and long, but much better than third and 13. Looks to be about third and nine. Maybe two down territory with 2.15 to go. Certainly a possibility, something I wouldn't put past Coach Scott Palti if he decides to go fall on fourth down if they need it. We'll see what they do on this play here. Eighth play of the drive. Parker fakes the pitch in trouble and gets rid of it. It's going to be incomplete. Looking for Quatman there in the flat. It'll be fourth down. And that might have been a good decision. He just threw that one in front of Quatman. He's unable to come up with it. Might have been able to break something loose, but the St. John's defense was right there, and it does look like the T-Birds are going to punt it away. Try and pin St. John's deep, if possible, with 155 remaining. Both teams scoring on their first drives of the game. Michael Quatman with the touchdown. I capped off a 10-play drive for LCC, and then Delphi St. John's on a one-yard 70-yard run. I'm sorry, a one-play 70-yard run. They got their touchdown, and that is it. That has been the scoring as the punt is downed at the 10-yard line. Fair catch called, and St. John's will start with 90 yards to pay dirt here before halftime. So it's going to be one of those drives where you're going to probe, you're going to try and pick up a couple first downs, but you're going to be somewhat conservative. You don't want to put yourself in a position where you turn the football over and give your opposition, LCC in this situation, a short field and an opportunity to score and take momentum. It's always a little dicey right now. You want to execute. You want to get the ball down the field. You want to run your two-minute offense, but you got to be really intelligent about it. 
yeah, this is certainly a situation where you do not want to give points or give easy opportunities to your opponent to score. But as you said, the both teams have been very careful with the football. With only one turnover. And we'll see what Boggs in the offense can do here on first down. This will be a handoff to Wirtz, and Wirtz fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, heavy dose of T.J. Wirtz. The only thing is, is that LCC understands that as well. <laughs> yeah. Number 54, that's Lewis Knotts. He's having a really good game. He's in on the tackle for no gain. Under 90 seconds as St. John's in no real hurry. So you nope. have to wonder if maybe they're just going to control the ball as much as they can, kill clock, and send it to half. And the T-Birds have all three timeouts left. If they can get a stop here, maybe they use it. Here's a pitch to Wirtz. Wirtz out to the 15-yard line, and that's it. LCC with all three of their timeouts remaining. And they're not going to. They, uh. Maybe you get a stop here. Maybe. Take a timeout. Make St. John's execute the punt. 50 seconds. Third down and four. Might be trying to make him jump, too. Kind of take that decision off the table, so to speak. Play clock under eight seconds. And this is Wirtz. One more time to the 18-yard line. And Coach Palti does take that timeout. And that's the Metzger Financial Services timeout. That stops the clock with 23 seconds left. So LCC will get one more crack at it before halftime. We'll show it to you here when we come back on WOSN. Our extra point field goal sponsor is the Eyesight of Lima and Delphus. Dr. Underbrink and the Eyesight of Lima and Delphus provides quality, comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delphus, and surrounding areas. Visit theeyesightoflima.com for more information. Punting team out. By punting team, I mean Boggs. Yep, Drew Boggs to kick it to Mylon Cowens and Lawson Flores. Boggs kick fielded at the 50 and plenty of green in front of Mylon Cowens. He's going to get out to the 30-yard line, so 20-yard punt return for Lima Central Catholic, and they're in business with two timeouts and 18 seconds left. They definitely are in business right here. On the 30-yard line, most of this game has been played on their defensive side of the 50, but right now they have an opportunity, albeit not much time, but they have an opportunity to look to attack here and get some points on the board before halftime. We talked about those 10 MAC championships for St. John's. You know, this is a, a new year for LCC. They're back in the Northwest Conference. When they were in the league from 2006 to 2012, in seven years, they won the NWC in five. Yep. No doubt the T-Bird faithful would like to see that run of dominance again. Of course, there's a bevy of Northwest conference teams that uh, don't want to see that return to form for LCC. Well, I was part of that decision as we um, had to deal with some changes in the league last year and uh, really saw the positives of bringing LCC and Fort Lormy into the league. I will tell you, I on paper, I'm like, this is going to make our league a lot stronger. And now that it's here, I'm like, whoa, this really makes our league yeah. a lot stronger. The ND NWC, really, really tough with the schools in it this year. The addition of Fort Laramie and LCC. Let's see how tough the T-Birds are on offense here on first down, final seconds of the half. A nice shiftiness right there out to the 16 yard line as that is JJ Sneeders with the Lodix Jewelry first down. Watch the block by Gianni McKee right there. Boom. Opens up the lane for his teammate. And that gets the ball down there. LCC's going to take the timeout with nine seconds. They've got the ball on the 17-yard line. So Metzger Financial Services timeout. We will uh, keep it right here as they are officially in the Royal First Red Zone. And uh, you've got one timeout left and nine seconds. So your options are limited on offense. There's really only about a couple things that you can do. And, and you have to think that the play has got to be you got to let Parker put it up and see if you can get a touchdown. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and you know, you got a situation here where you've got Lawson Flores and Mylon Cowens, two outstanding receivers that you can look for on this play. But you want to give yourself enough time. Maybe you can go for a field goal if you have an incompletion here and time remaining on the clock. Uh, it would be about a 35-yarder from right where the ball is marked now. So we'll see what the uh, approach is. Matthew Quatman is the kicker. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see Quatman roll out to the flats here. He had a big reception last week. Parker looking, puts that one out. Was looking for Quatman and a little too high incomplete. Good defense there by Delphi St. John's. Camden Gable all over that. And that will bring up second down and five seconds to go. Coach Paulie's got a decision. Looks like he's going to keep his offense on the field right here. And you're going to look for a situation where you can either catch the ball in the end zone or inside the 10 and try and get there with some yards after the catch, yak yardage. So five seconds. Second down and 10. Michael Quatman in motion. Matthew Quatman with him. And we will have another timeout. LCC will take their last timeout. Metzger Financial Services timeout with five seconds remaining. They'll talk this over and how they want to do. And it's kind of the same situation, only now you've got five seconds. Your, your options are even more limited. Do you, do you take a shot at the end zone? Do you, or do you go out there and maybe try a field goal? I, I think they're going to come out and uh, look to throw one into the end zone. I don't. I do see Quatman going out, though, like he's trying to set up. Now nah, I think they're going to go for it. And I think that's what you do here, Patrick. You, you continue to put the pressure on your opponent's defense, on the St. John's defense. Now they're going to line up. They're going to line Quatman up for a field goal. It'll be right at the 25-yard line. So That'll make it a 35-yard attempt. So they will set up on the right hash mark for a 35-yard field goal. Eyesight of Lima and Delphi's field goal attempt. This would give Lima Central Catholic the lead heading into half, and this one's going to hook left, and it will be no good. So had enough leg. It had the leg just wide to the left, and that is how half number one will conclude here from Lima Spartan Stadium. We're all knotted up at seven. Halftime activities coming up when we come back on WOSN. Just about time for the third quarter to get started, and our third quarter sponsor is Path Donuts and Cream. Visit any of their four area locations, including their new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC, open daily. Ready for the third quarter to get started, all tied up at seven here for the Holy War, Lima Central Catholic and Delphi St. John's. Patrick Hamler, Dave Bowen here with you. A close, tight-knit contest, and it'll be interesting to see what adjustments each team comes and decides to make as we head into quarter number three, Dave. Yeah, a good old good one. Initially, thought it was gonna, we thought it was going to be a shootout. We were 7-7 seven seven right away in the first quarter, but then the defenses have stepped up. Two tradition-rich programs. Todd Schulte in his 26th season. Adjustments for St. John's, really not a whole lot. They haven't allowed the big play they were concerned about. They've kept the football in front of them. They've made LCC earn it. LCC did have that opening drive of 64 yards, which they scored their touchdown on. And then uh, St. John's forced a big turnover to keep LCC out of the end zone in the second quarter. Um, they need to continue great pursuit to the football defensively. LCC, Scott Poldy in his 11th season here at LCC. They had eight first downs in the first half. They've played great defense as well. I think Coach Poldy, he and his squad, they're finding out who they are. Now they've got to take it another step in finding out who they want to become. And both coaches, they got to find that sweet spot with motivation. They're doing a lot of good things. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's going to come down to execution and who blinks first. Ready to start the third quarter. And as you mentioned, both teams looking to get something going offensively. Both teams successful on each of their first drives. They score touchdowns as this is a – Short kick that could matriculate out of bounds. Well, it will, but not before it touches a St. John's player. That one will go out at the 27-yard line, in between the 27 and the 28-yard line. That's where Delphi St. John's will start their first drive of the third quarter. Uh, both teams starting with touchdowns on their first drives. And then for St. John's, it was punt, fumble, punt, punt. For Lima Central Catholic, it was punt, punt, 
Punt, punt. Then a missed field goal to end the first half. Christian Young shoves that one out of bounds. He seemed a little upset with himself that he didn't recover, but he did the next best thing. He kept everybody else from getting it. LCC, good coaching right there. They picked up that open area in the flat, went with the pooch punt or pooch kick, if you will, and uh, unable to come up with it, but a nice executed play both ways. Drew Boggs under center, first down and 10 for the Blue Jays. Here is TJ Wirtz working it up the middle to the 30. Just past the 30, here's the web insurance replay. Look at the pound the middle is St. John's. They've done that all night long. And when you've got a T.J. Words, you want to give him the football again. Last week, he rushed seven times for 146 yards. That's 21 yards per carry. That's pretty nice. Uh, we have a offsetting personal fouls, I believe. Yeah, indeed, you're right. So a little uh, chippiness to get the second half started off. So they offset. And much ado about nothing here on second down and eight. Yeah, TJ Wirtz, two TDs, seven carries. Workhorse last year as well. He had 565 yards rushing and six TDs being called upon to continue that workload, which I'm sure he embraces here in 2024. Bog so far three of five passing in the first half. Here comes pass number six, and Boggs with plenty of time. Now he's going to take off and run, showing some nice shifting. This lot is Julie first down, takes a solid shot at the 42-yard line. I think that was Mylon Cowens on the tackle, and here's the web replay. The Web Insurance Agency replay, Drew Boggs zigging and zagging out in the open field, and a collision between he and Mylon Cowens. Both guys get up. But um, <laughs> zig and zag, and then they zoomed into each other right there, Patrick. First down, though, for St. John's. Lottox truly first down. Clean hit there by Cowens to make the tackle across the 40 to the 42 as the Blue Jays in business. Ninth first down of the game. And Boggs pitches it to Wirtz. Looking for space up the middle across the 45 to the 47. Pounding up the middle is St. John's here in the early going of the third quarter. Let's do what we do, execute it like the sacrifice bunt in baseball. If you do it correctly, there's not much the defense can do. A nice chunk of yardage there on first down brings up second and a long four. Ball on the... Crest of the Spartan helmet there in midfield. And handoff to Wirtz once again, and the ball is dropped or knocked down at the 49 yard line. Abby Sorrells, he's in on the stop on that one. Coming up the middle, does a nice job, makes it third down, but. Now it's decision time offensively if you're St. John's. Do you want to swing it around the side, throw the ball, or are you going to go back to your bread and butter between the tackles? We'll find out here. Third down and four. Boggs looking for some guidance here in this Pats Donuts and Cream third quarter. LCC with that 4-3 defense. Austin Schaefer in motion. Boggs lets it go, pass is complete. Forward progress will give him the Lodix Jewelry first down. Nice out pattern and executed effectively by Boggs and his teammate, number five, Braden Lindemann. I believe that was number five. Could be wrong on that, but that's what I tried to pick out. Maybe it was number nine. I I see, I thought it was 15. <laughs> so I don't know. Right, 15. Well done, Blue Jay. Yes, exactly. Second first down of this drive as the Blue Jays keep it going. Under nine minutes remaining in the third quarter. Boggs rolling right. 
has a man. Pass is complete. Gagne at the 30-yard line. Lonix Jewelry first down. And a host of LCC players as flags come out on the play. Wonderful. Kind of curious yeah. as to maybe a face mask. That looks to be the preliminary signal from the umpire to the referee. Flags on both sides of the action there. But we definitely know who caught that one. Connor Gagne yeah, with a yes. nice reception. And after running the ball, the first part of this drive, St. John's comes with two consecutive pass plays, connecting on both, and that's going to move the chains, plus yardage with the penalty, the face mask against the T-Birds. So a big pickup of 31 yards total, 15 from the penalty and 16 from the pass. And the Blue Jays are in business. They're in the rural first red zone. Boggs is going to tuck and run to the 15, breaks a tackle inside the 10, and he's wrapped up around the seven-yard line. But we've got holding on the play, the LCC interior defense breaking through the line of scrimmage. I think that holds on number 63 for St. John's, Josh Mueller. This is the oh, Gagne pass a, yeah, okay. from earlier. Uh-huh. So the T-Birds are going to accept that penalty, Patrick, to uh, push St. John's back. Without a doubt, that's going to push them back to the 24-yard line. So that'll make it first and 20. Penalties can be drive killers. But when you can overcome a penalty, it breaks the back of your opponent a little bit. It's mm -hmm. really going to be interesting to see what happens here. St. John's is coming out, has come out here with their first drive of the third quarter, being very effective on offense. Swings the ball out, passes complete. Trying to make something happen on the ground. Austin Schaefer, is, he is down around the 22-yard line. Short gain on that play. This is the longest drive of the night so far for Delphi St. John's, coming up on their 10th play. We haven't seen them throw a screen all night long. This might be a time for that type of play. Because if you're LCC, you're definitely thinking pass. Three wide receivers out to the left, second down and 17. Pocket collapses and Boggs brought down for the sack as the pressure reaches home for Lima Central Catholic. They're able to get through that offensive line. Number 54 for the T-Birds, Lewis Knotts. We called his name a lot in the first half. We started in the third quarter as well. Knotts with the penetration, and that pushes the ball back. It's third and long distance for the Blue Jays. Third down and a battleship. Yeah. Boggs, pressure, roll all the way back at his 42. Let's this one go and slips on the turf there on the 29 yard line. And that will bring up a long fourth down. TJ Wirtz, the recipient, and a drive that was looking very promising for Adolphus St. John's gets backed up with penalties. I do think that was the screenplay that they were looking to go to on that particular play. I was calling for it to play before, but LCC sniffed it out. Nobody was open. And no gain on the play. Looks like a punt. LCC in more of a prevent defense just to make sure Boggs does Kick it away, and he does. Uh, big punt, going to try and take a positive bounce. Well, it does for LCC. So the drive stalls out for Delphi St. John's. LCC will take over at the 20-yard line. So good job by the defense, able to cause some problems and stop what looked to be a very promising drive for the Blue Jays. Yeah, they did come out and 
initially executed what they wanted to do on offense, but as we have seen most of the night from both defenses, LCC stiffens up. They keep St. John's out of the red zone, and now they have the ball for their first possession of the third quarter. So it was an 11-yard punt, and now Parker and the Blue Jays take over on first down. Is this a quick pass? Loddix Jewelry first down out across the 35. Uh, ball comes out, but I think the play was dead. Out to the 31-yard line. Yes, the official over there went down on his knee right away to indicate that the play was dead. The ball was down, but a nice play for LCC to get their first drive underway. Change or move the chains. LCC starts with a pass. I think they might look to run it to the wide side over here now. Let's see if they bring Michael Quatman across. Here he comes. They fake and it. Parker's going to keep it this time up the middle to the 40 before he is pushed back. And they will give him to the 40. Here's the web insurance replay. A quarterback keeper the whole way picks up some positive yardage. Make it second and six, Patrick. And both offenses, again, with the heat and everything, being very methodical, conserve the energy, may need it down the stretch. High school football, especially small school high school football, a lot of guys playing both ways. Second and six, handoff. Quatman looking for some space and not finding anything. He's pushed back to the 37. We see the Web Insurance Agency replay here. It's almost like St. John's has a spy on Matthew Quatman <laughs> at all times. They just are not going to allow him to beat them. That seems to be the philosophy thus far up to this point in this football game. We'll lose three on that play. Uh, one, I guess, actually, they'll give him a little bit of a benefit there. They're down in seven for the T-Birds. Parker back to pass, fakes, going long. Got him. Has a man in it just outside of his reach there at the 20-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down and almost as Michael Quatman was the intended receiver on that play. He got behind that Blue Jay defense. The cornerback over there for St. John's, he's going off the field. I think he's cramping up a little bit. I can't pick his number up. Yeah, he's down on the field now because he's been sideways to me the whole time. But uh, he's getting stretched out now. And we hadn't seen any of that in the first half, but not surprised that we're seeing it now. I was just about to say we haven't seen much of that so far, but third quarter is where we start to see that. Kind of show up. Here's the punt out to the 26-yard line, and Lindemann with nowhere to go, about four yards before he is stopped, and the Blue Jays will start at the 33-yard line. So another punt forced by these two defenses, and this has been a defensive showdown here in the Holy War 2024. It really has. Again, both teams come into this game having gained a lot of yardage from week one, 441 for St. John's last week, LCC 335 total yards. They've been hard to come by tonight as both defenses have been exceptional. So the Jays come back out. They've set up shop at the 33. And this is Wirtz on first down up the middle and carrying defenders out to the 40-yard line. T.J. Wirtz does a great job right there, catching the football and the toss from his quarterback and then reading where the hole is. Uh, he had the option to go right or left, and he decides to go left and picks up a nice gain, make it second and three for the Blue Jays. He did a very nice job indeed. 
Blue Jays trying to get some offense going here as we come up under three minutes remaining in the past Donuts and Cream third quarter. Lindemann in motion. Boggs rolling. Good protection. Gagne complete to the 50, across the 50 to the 48-yard line. That's a lot of jewelry first down. And we've got a player down okay. for the T-Birds, but again, nice job there by Gagne. Finds a hole in that zone defense. Boggs finds him, and it's another first down for St. John's. I think that's Myron Cowens who is down. Looks like he is cramping up. At least we hope that's all it is. Metzger Financial Services timeout on the field with 2.31 remaining. Let's take a break. We'll come back. All tied up at 7 here on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. First and 10 coming up here for Del uh, Delphi St. John's. 49. Here is Wirtz right up the middle, just shy of the 45 yard line. Good Take vision for TJ Wirtz. Comes around the right side. Our injured player, Cramps, being the issue, Xavier Purnell for LCC. He's on the sideline, being stretched out right now and drinking a lot of fluids. Said we hadn't had many problems like that. Got to the third quarter, almost through the third quarter before we had that. Might be something we see quite a bit here as this has been a pretty steamy night, pretty steamy week overall. Second down and six. Boggs rolling out left. Fires pass complete at the 38-yard line. Lindemann across the chains for a, another Lodox Jewelry first down. Yeah, nice job by Tyler Lindemann getting at the sticks and then turn around and sitting down. Boggs on the run, going to his left. Nice throw by the right-hander. First down, Delphi St. John's. So the Blue Jays back on the move. Just like they were on their last drive here in the third quarter. And they're really exhibiting some good balance between the pass and the run. Here is Wirtz on first down, running guys over as he takes it out to the 30. Eight-yard pickup. Eight-yard pickup. Now the playbook is completely wide open for St. John's. They can go with the run or they can roll Boggs out and try and find an open receiver. He's being so patient when he rolls out, waiting for his receivers to sit down in the middle of this defense of LCC. Second and three. As you said, Dave, the playbook opens up. We'll see what they do. It's going to hand it right to Wirtz. And Wirtz continuing to push the pile ahead to the 25-yard line. And that'll move the sticks. Another Lodox Jewelry first down. Lodox Jewelry first down. And the St. John faithful cheering on T.J. Wirtz as he carries some defenders with him to another Delphus first down. That 6'2", 225-pound frame of T.J. Wirtz starting to assert itself here as we get further along in this game. That's what you see with a lot of these running attacks as those three, four-yard pickups in the first and second quarter. They start turning into six, seven, eight, nine-yard pickups here in the later part of the contest. First and 10, Wirtz once again, and this time the T-Bird defense is right there, loss of one on the play. A host of T-Birds. In on the stop. Yeah. And Wirtz is down. Number eight for LCC, J.J. Schneiders. He's holding his left arm a little bit. Schneiders, Austin Schaefer. It's just a collision sport. That was the definition of it right there on that play. Metzger Financial Services timeout. As we are at the end of the third quarter, it's all tied up at seven. 12 minutes to go. Maybe this is the Holy War on WOSN. Welcome back. Our touchdown sponsor is Ricker Lawn and Landscape. Contact Ricker Lawn and Landscape for all your lawn care needs, including fertilization and weed control programs, aerating, hydro seeding, irrigation service, insulation, and more. Pass donuts and cream, fourth quarter, ready to get started. Patrick Hamler, Dave Bowen, 
here with you as we get to the final, maybe the final 12 minutes of this one. Was it Europe? We, I, I was asked that over it the was. break. Final countdown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. You I are was, correct. I was an adult contemporary DJ for six years. Every so often, stuff in my brain that should be probably more important things that should be there is filled with music knowledge. Well, so. 80s music, I'm all over it. There you go. Europe is. Other side. Here is Boggs letting it go. Pass is complete on second down and 12 out to the 20-yard line. Austin Schaefer on the catch. And then a number eight for That's Carson LCC. Hefner on the yes, stop. Yep. Carson Hefner right there. But they are now in the rural first red zone. Are the Blue Jays a methodical drive imposing their will right now on the LCC defense? Maybe trying to get a bit of a jump there. And we are going to have a... Metzger Financial Services timeout. Lima Central Catholic is going to kick their timeout. I think that only leaves them with one remaining. We'll take a timeout as well. We're all tied up at 7 here on WOSN. Our first down sponsor tonight, Laudex Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudex.com. Interesting timeout right there, Patrick. Third and a long six. Probably two down territory for St. John's, but if you can really stiffen up defensively here, going to make that fourth down very challenging. LCC looking for another stop. Blue Jays looking to punch it in. Just shy of the 20 here. Third down and six. Boggs rolling pass incomplete. Intended for, I believe that was, that was Schaefer there at the 15-yard line, and that'll be fourth down. And as you said, Two down territory here, perhaps. Yeah, Coach Pauly wanted to make sure his kids were as fresh as possible for these two downs. Great call by the head coach. Now they've got to execute defensively one more time. Here we are. Big play in this game right here. Four wide, man in motion, fourth and six. Boggs, back to pass. Looking to scramble, looking to throw, and wrapped up out of bounds. Pushed out at the 20-yard line, and a turnover on downs forced by the T-Bird defense. Drew Boggs looks down the field. Nobody's open. Decides to look to make it on his own. But for LCC, number 21, Carter Lester shuts it down. Turnover on downs. Great defensive stand by the T-Birds. Thunderbirds getting the important stop, and they will take over with 11-12 remaining in the fourth quarter, and they will take over at the 20, which is where their last drive started in the third quarter. That drive not getting a whole lot of uh, plays. Five plays, and that was it. So they will try and extend it this time around. Yeah, this is a big drive for the T-Birds. they got to keep their defense off the field. Um, and there's a nice run. Hand off up the middle, pushing the pile out to the 28-yard line. Here's the replay of it. Matthew Quatman squirts through there. His lineman led by number 75. That's the big guy for uh, LCC, Gianni McKee, the three-year starter. That's who you're going to run behind in this situation. And Quatman with his helmet off, so he is going to come out for this play. And again, it's not so much we know. It's small school football. A lot of guys are playing both ways, but there's a different energy when you're on offense compared to when you're on defense and you're looking to take it to the opponent. And that's what LCC is looking to do right here. Parker with the keeper and getting the Lodix Jewelry first down as he burrows his way. Shades of Carson Parker on that play. <laughs> Here's Brady, a look at it. It says, hey, big brother. I can dish it out, too, with when I'm carrying the, the pig skin. But goes again off that right side where none other than Gianni McKee stations himself. Another first down for the T-Birds. I feel like he might have been the recipient of a few of those of Carson in the <laughs> backyard over the years. Carson and then if Billy Burke came over, same thing. Fresh set of downs. Hand off. Quatman shifty moves. Bouncing it outside. 45, cuts back inside across the 50 to the 48-yard line. They'll mark him at the 
49, LCC 49. In any case, a Lodox Jewelry first down. Right here, we see that burst of speed that Matthew Klopman has. He just hasn't been able to put it out there on display because the St. John's defense, they've had his number all night long. But right there, gets out in the open field a little bit, picks up, as you said, Patrick, another first down for the T-Birds. 9.45 left here in the final canto. And, of course, if you're LCC, you're really not in a hurry. You can take up. If you could take up the final 9.36, you will try and do it. And there's a piggyback ride. Yes. Great one there across the 45 to the 43-yard line. But, hey, it's going to go down as a tackle in the scorebook. Tackle made there by Austin Arnold. And Matthew Klopman's going to take himself out of the game to catch a breather here. Much deserved breather. Two great running plays right there. Coach Paldy, and we said it in our pregame, keys to the game. He's the workhorse. He's going to see the ball a lot here down the stretch, but right now, a well-deserved break. On second down and four, here is Parker on the keeper and pushed. Not quite the touch push, but it works nonetheless. 38-yard <laughs> yeah. line and another Lodox Jewelry first down. I actually think you, a St. John's defender hit him in the back, and he was able to escape the tackle and fall forward. LCC on a drive. This started with 11-12 left in the fourth quarter. It's down to 8:44. Started on their own 20-yard line. They've got it on the St. John's 38. Fresh set of sticks for the T-Birds as they keep advancing the football. Drive has started at their own 20. Here is Parker up the middle. A couple of spin moves and down to the 34. A couple of runs by Brady Parker while Matthew Quatman catches a breather. Quatman coming back into the game now. Big boy football. Here it is. Stop us. Shortest distance between two points. Straight line, and right now, that's what LCC's doing, pounding between the tackles. And they are running it down that straight line. Do the Blue Jays have an answer on defense? Here's Quatman breaking a couple tackles, and that's something else you're seeing them do, too, is they're going that straight line. They're also breaking tackles on the way those extra yards. And this is where we said at the beginning of the game, St. John's, they have eight players going both ways. LCC only five. That may be showing itself here down the stretch. Coach Paldy playing pounded at you football right now. Third down and five. I'd say it's two down territory again. Don't look for LCC to pass it here, even though everybody's in the box for St. John's. Tight formation, there and that's is. what they're yeah. going to. They're going to they go along guy. and has a man. It's Palti and Palti. Good defensive play there, as I think it was Drew Boggs knocking it out. Here's another look at it. Yeah, it is Drew Boggs. Recovers nicely. Just a little too much air underneath that ball allows Boggs to recover, and he puts a stick on the receiver, unable to hang on to that one. Makes it fourth and five. Now decision time for Coach Paulding. And right now, looks like he's going to go for it. Paul, Caden Falky, Ra Falky rather, looks like he was going to bring that in. And Boggs with the perfect hit at the perfect time. And uh, I, I think you're right. I don't. I they're probably going to go for it, but I think there's some confusion. They're going to have to use a timeout. The play clock was down to four. So a Metzger Financial Services timeout, so they will have to take it and burn a timeout, and LCC with only one remaining will take it as well. We're tied at seven here on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. All tied up at seven on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Lima Central Catholic facing a fourth down and five, having to burn a timeout to figure out what play they want to run. And it looks like they are still going to go for it. Thought they might punt, Dave, but they are looking yep. like they're going to go for it. Maybe try to get them to jump. They're nope. going to go for it. Parker looking to pass. Let's this one go. Looking end zone. Pass is knocked away, but a flag comes out. And I... 
I don't want to say this is automatically defensive pass interference. We'll see what the official says. I think it is. I know that the nonverbals of Mylon Cowens are like, oh, I might have messed up, but I think he's cramping. He's just trying to walk off. We had a good shot of him right there. And it is going to go against St. John's. They're moving the chains, moving the ball up the field. It's one of those tough plays. First of all, Brady Parker, what an arm to get it there on the move. Yeah. But it still is a little short, and that's the pass interference call you see happen so often. It's not anything that the defender is doing wrong. He just gets caught in that position where he can't stop, and he collides, collides into the receiver. So that keeps the drive alive. And the ball comes out. Scrum for the football, and there's a St. John's player who says they have it. I think that was like hoping you got the present you want under the Christmas tree that, that on Christmas be. morning. And there it looks like it's LCC saved yep. it. Yep, it'll be second down. LCC able to recover it. I think the ball did come loose. Yeah, Chris Sirkovich comes up with it. The right guard for the T-Birds. That offensive line, Andrew Baldoff, Brady Malcolm, Chris Sirkovich, Gianni McKee, and Dom McKee imposing their will on this drive where the T-Birds are going to try and put it in the end zone. And a timeout by Lima Central Catholic, Metzger Financial Services timeout. LCC has used up all of their timeouts. So that will, that will be it. Coach Baldy seeing the significance, the importance of executing on this drive. They've got it down in the rural one, rural first red zone. Ball, yeah, ball inside the 15. And you have to think, regardless of what else happens, this is probably your best field position for the rest of regulation. So you have to make it count as much as you can. And as you said earlier, it's a situation where LCC wants a long, methodical drive, chew up as much time as they can, but you have to balance that with rhythm and continued execution. Coach Pauly sends something out of whack a little bit, takes the time out to get everything reestablished for his T-Bird offense. So far, LCC has burned almost five minutes off the clock here in this fourth quarter. And you have to think that, obviously you need to score, that's paramount. But if you can get a few more, uh, a minute or so off the clock still, you got to think you'd feel good, pretty good about that as well. But scoring has got to be the important thing. Is here on second down. And it's going to be Quatman out to the 10. Quatman up the middle going behind that right side of that offensive line. Chris Sirkovich and Gianni McKee. We know Matthew Quatman has enough leg to make a field goal from this distance. We saw him miss wide left from, what was it, about 35? Yeah, it was a 35-yard field goal uh -huh. attempt. Enough leg, just wide left. Well, they're in really good field goal position right now, but they'd love to put six on the board. Third down and four. And this is going to be a Parker keeper. Fine space, gets across the five, and tackled at the two-yard line. A lot of jewelry first down. It's first and goal. Matthew Quatman with a big block downfield. Almost springs Parker into the end zone, but it's first and goal, T-Birds. Best opportunity for the T-Birds to score since the first quarter. When they also took a long drive, they converted a touchdown on the 10th play of that drive, play 12 coming up of this one. I look for them to keep it on the ground. Ball security is huge. They turned the ball over down here on the two-yard line in the first half. Matthew Quatman's going to be the ball carrier. Quatman looking for space up the middle and nothing coming out, and another helmet comes out. All Also thankful no head is in it. <laughs> it's a web insurance replay. And I think that's Quatman's helmet. And the, the issue there that Coach Paldi's upset with, he thinks it was yanked off intentionally. But the second half of that, if it is Quatman's helmet, he's got to come out of the game. He's got to come out of the game, right. Coach Paldi does not want him on the sideline right now. He can't and use a timeout to keep him in the game. And Quatman is 
was making his case. The official's like, I'm losing my helmet because someone yanked it off, probably by the face mask. That's no doubt the argument he's making. But in any case, he's going to have to come out. Eddie then, White replace, replaces him in the backfield. Look for Brady Parker to keep it here. That's what we've seen when quatman has been out of the game on this drive. And a timeout. With the signal in LCC, but they don't have any timeouts. Yep. St. John's taking the timeout. And that's your financial services timeout. 431 remaining. Blue Jays trying to keep LCC from knocking on the door. We'll be right back. Our uh, extra point field goal sponsor is Dr. Underbrink and the eyesight of Lima and Delphus, providing quality comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delphus, and surrounding areas. Visit the eyesightoflima.com for more information. So Matthew Quatman not able to come back into the game, even with the LCC or with the Delta St. John's timeout. So they will have to run a play without him. And you have to think, as you were saying, Dave, I think it's probably going to be Brady Parker. Yep, follows running back Eddie White on the left side. Do they get the push? He they does. do. Touchdown. A record lawn and landscape touchdown. And LCC is on top. Give a little love to the left side of that offensive line again. Parker follows his running back, Eddie White, and able to get across the goal line to pay dirt. LCC with a long extended drive and the touchdown. Klopman will come in for the PAT, push this lead to seven. Capping off an 80 yard drive for Lima Central Catholic. And now Klopman in to attempt the eyesight of Lima and Delphus extra point. which would give LCC the lead back. Kick is up, and it is good. A 12-play, 80-yard drive capped off by a Brady Parker touchdown run, and LCC is back on top, 14-7 over Delphi St. John's. Can the Blue Jays answer? Find out next on WOSN. Our instant replays tonight brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. 12-play, 80-yard drive for Lima Central Catholic. Puts them back on top, 14-7, to as we're coming up on the end of this one. And this is a positive way for St. John's as the kick goes out of bounds. So yeah. that will give the Blue Jays pretty good field position to start this drive. Yeah, I believe it'll be first and 10 for St. John's on the 35-yard line. You've been hitting at overtime throughout this second half. St. John's, they put a drive together. We're going to kick it again. But you've been hitting at that, Patrick, hmm. and St. John's does have the offensive firepower to put a touchdown on the board. We'll take a little free football here in week two, wouldn't we? Yeah, why not? It's cooled down, so, you know. Yeah, it's down to a cool 81 degrees. Down to 81 degrees? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Might be cooler on the field than it is up here in the press box. It's a little toasty up here tonight. But I will say, overall, both teams have done a really nice job of, of preparing this week. We haven't. We've seen some, you know, heat-related um, calf spasms, but overall they've done a nice job of playing hard throughout. This has been a great contest. Maybe not the offensive explosion a lot of people expected, but good football nonetheless. This one fielded at the 16-yard line. And the Blue Jays will get a little better starting field position. They'll be out the 39-yard line. Braden Pullman with the return. He's tackled by Carter Lester. So, yeah, money time pretty much here. 4.26 to go in the game. And St. John's has two timeouts. And LCC is out of T.O. So if St. John's can find some rhythm, there's not going to be a whole lot that LCC can do to break it. Coach Pauldy has used his timeouts in an effective way, obviously, stopping a drive and then scoring out of a timeout. But right now, He's used them, St. John's, with the rock. 
First drive of the fourth quarter for Blue, the Blue Jays. Blue Jays had the ball for a little bit at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Here's a pass completed to Pullman at the 49. Gets the Lodix Jewelry first down. Another great play. We see it on the Web Insurance Agency replay. Drew Boggs and Brady Parker have both put on a clinic of how to manage a football game tonight. Take what's there uh, that the defense is giving you. They found receivers who have sat down against the zone defense of both squads and just really, really excellent quarterback play. I know game manager is a dirty word in, in some circles, but I tell you what, this is exactly what you want to see. You want to see your guys play responsible, play within themselves, make plays when they have to, and not turn the ball over. And we've seen that from both guys tonight. Boggs keeps the ball and gets across the 45 to the 44. And Matthew Quatman's helmet came off again, and he's going to have to go out. This time it's on the tackle. Yeah, these two tradition-rich programs, the best compliment you can give a football coach is, is that, you know, you and your team, you don't beat yourselves. Right. The other team has to win the game. And that's what we've seen tonight. It's just going to be what's going to be the final chapter, what's going to be the final storyline on how this finishes. Coming up on three minutes remaining. Blue Jays on the march. Ball on the 44. Boggs looking long, looking for Pullman. Incomplete. Double covered, but would have been hard to catch that one regardless. Drew Boggs a little upset with himself right there on overthrowing his intended receiver. So third down and six coming up for the Blue Jays. 3.07 left. You don't have to get all quarter. of it on this play, right. but you got to pick up a chunk. You got to have some positive yardage to give you fourth and short. Boggs rolling right. Let's this one go past complete. Nice hands there. Schaefer bringing it in. Lodge Drury first down as he goes out of bounds. The 36. Great catch by Austin Schaefer. Extends the hands out there. Pulls it in. I can go way back on you, Patrick. It reminded me of a Mike Lanise catch for Ohio State. That is way back. You don't even know who I'm talking nope, about. Nope, I have no idea. <laughs> the old timers out there with me, they'll remember Mike Lanise, a Rhodes Scholar for Ohio State. There you go. Wonder if he was National Honor Society as well yeah, in high school. Good First question. and ten. Here is Boggs. He's going to keep this one. Finds a seam up the middle and brought down at the 21-yard line. Lost Jewelry first down and the Blue Jays. In business here with 2.52 to go. Goes off the left side of that offensive line, does Drew Boggs. Back-to-back -back first downs for Delphi St. John's. And now we're in a situation where St. John's, yeah, we need to score, but we don't want to leave too much time on that clock, giving it back to LCC. Can't be your focus. Your focus is to get it into the end zone. But chewing up some time would be Here good. Here is Wirtz. Wirtz up the middle, making guys miss to the five and brought down at the one-yard line. A Lodix Drury first down in the real first red zone. We see it on the replay. T.J. Wirtz rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. LCC just able to stop the bleeding a little bit by keeping him out of the end zone on this drive. Look for St. John's to keep it simple. 20 yards on that carry on the doorstep right now at first and goal. And, of course, if you punch this in, do you go for one or do you go for two? First, we're going to have a timeout to talk it over. Blue Jays take their second timeout. They have one remaining. We'll take it as well. The Blue Jays at the one looking to punch it in. In the fourth here on WOSN, 14 to 7, blue LCC on top. Welcome back. Our timeout sponsor, Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Blue Jays at the one-yard line in the rural first red zone, 202 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Do you think number 46 is going to get the ball here? I think it's really possible. If not him, it's going to be number 10. And boom, 
into the end zone for a Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown. And now, do you go for one or do you go for two? Again, it's early in the season and we don't have a real good feel as fans and the broadcasters of what St. John's typically will do in this tight situation. It looks like... I mean, they say go for one at home, go for two on the road. Yeah. I don't know if that's what uh, Coach Schulte wants to do in this situation. Has his kicker listed as number 51, Austin Arnold, but we've seen Drew Boggs do the kickoff duties. Right. They're going to put it on the left hash. They're going to look to go ahead here with 159 left in quarter number four. Here we go. And timeout, Delphi St. John's. I just love it. Both coaches using those timeouts to make sure they have everybody on the same page. And as and that, we're not just talking the 11 guys on the field. As a coaching staff, are we all on the same page as to what we want to go for two right. here? And um, get this extra time, and that way it's a unified front, and the guys can sense that from the coaching staff, and they're going to go out there and give their best effort. And these are the situations where I know you, you try and create opportunities to work on these throughout the week, but you don't always have – all that time crafted because you're trying to work on everything else. You're trying to get your offense in place. You don't necessarily have an afternoon to say, all right, we're going to work on, hey, we're trailing by one and we have a two point conversion play. You know, so you're right. You want to make sure that you have everything put together. And that's part of this chess match. That's why you're seeing all these teams. These teams take all these timeouts to make sure that they have the absolute right personnel. Everyone's on the same page. Everyone knows exactly what they're going to do. And they've changed up their formation. Looks like they're going to kick it, Dave. Yeah, they've moved the ball back to the middle of the field. And it's going to be Drew Boggs for the tie. So perhaps they, Coach Schulte not feeling comfortable with how that two-point was being set up or everyone's understanding with it. That's just a guess on our part. In any case, here comes the extra point to tie it up. And it is no good. To the left, wide left, had enough leg. He line drived it. LCC didn't get a hand on the low kick, just wide left. And 14 13 is our score. The T Birds are ahead. Now you got to set up the onside kick. Yep, onside kick is coming up. And of course, after all that, the extra point is no good. I know it's easy to sit back and go, well, man, he should have gone for two. <laughs> yeah, anybody, hey, anybody it, can be the. Uh, right. Our yeah. chair quarterback yeah, exactly. after the play, hindsight's 20-20, whatever cliche you want to use, Patrick. But exactly. Coach Schulte, he knows his team, and in that situation, he felt that was the best way to go. And now you'll use it as a growth piece. You'll learn from it, both mentally and physically. But this game's not over by any stretch. This onside kick's going to be a big play. And it's not like the guys have sweaty hands and arms out there. That ball may uh, squirt right. all over the place. Yeah, they're... There is, uh, there is still plenty of time. There is still plenty of action ahead of us here. LCC hanging on to a 14-13 lead. St. John's is going to attempt the onside kick. Only one turnover in this contest. It was a fumble earlier on in the uh, second quarter, rather, by Delphi St. John's. Other than that, it has been a turnover-free contest. Now the Blue Jays will set up at the 40-yard line. Looks like the onside kick is going to come to the near side. Here we go. Quatman is nearby where they think the ball will go. It's going to squirt up and into the hands of number 13, Dakota Gerdeman. And we'll see how much, not sure about the time in my head. but Exactly, yeah. I, I think that LCC can wind this clock down almost to the very bottom. It's going to be close, though. Comes back to ball security on offense and defensively. You're looking to strip it. If they do, in fact, run the ball at all, you might see uh, Brady Parker just sort of dance around in the backfield. But right now, the coaching staff, you know, you have a card for this, like how, ma how much time you can take off with how many snaps. There's an assistant coach that's in charge of this. And 
They're in the shotgun because that's what they run, but they are definitely in what you would call victory formation with a deep back just to protect anything that might slip. Right. Blue Jays cannot stop the clock, and they're still going to have to pressure the offense, however, because they can just stand back there until someone gets them. What an outstanding football game tonight, Patrick. Absolutely. Both of these teams just really getting after it. St. John's, they won this game last year after LCC had won five in a row. LCC loses last week. St. John's wins. And after week two here, it appears that LCC is going to get into the winning column. A hard-fought victory. And downed quickly. And they'll wind it down. I think they can snap it one more time and then the rest of that clock can run off. I believe you're right. That'll, that last snap will be with under 40 seconds to go and then that will do it. They will not have to snap the ball again and the Blue Jays cannot stop the clock. So apart from something completely unheard of happening here, as you said, the Blue Jays, uh, the T-Birds uh, will pick up win number one. There they down it. It'll be fourth down, but it won't matter. LCC getting the job done tonight here at home. They pick up the 14-13 win over Delphus St. John's. We will be back to wrap this one up when we come back here on WOSN. The final once again, Lima Central Catholic 14, St. John's 13. Post game coming up when we come back. Welcome back. Our Stolly Hustle winner is brought to you by Stolly Insurance. Check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. Lima Central Catholic wins the Holy War, 14 to 13. Patrick Hamler, Dave Bowen back to wrap this one up, and it is the Thunderbirds, Matthew Quatman, our Stolly Hustle Award winner, although really it could have gone to a couple guys tonight. Could have gone to a couple guys on either side of the ball. Uh, just an outstanding football game. It's what we expected. I expected a Donnie Brook from the get-go, and it was Coach Schulte. He's going to be able to take a lot of positives out of this game for his St. John's Blue, Blue Jays. The second half, Drew Boggs and TJ Wirtz asserted themselves. Uh, just an outstanding effort. But for LCC and Coach Scott, Scott Poldy, you had Brady Parker, you had Matthew Quatman. That That's where it really came down to in the second half. Everybody, I know it's a team win, defense and offense, but offensively, Parker and Quatman, they were the guys that were leading the charge. And Matthew Quatman, they shortened the playbook in the second half, and it was, here you go, number four. Here's the pigs, pigskin. Do something with it. And there was some tough sledding, but he comes away with our Stolly Hustle Award. So Lima Central Catholic holding on for the 14 to 13 win, getting a payback, if you will, from last year when Delphi St. John's came from behind to take the Holy War at Stadium Park. That is going to wrap up our coverage as we send it out of here. I want to thank our terrific production crew for bringing you all the sights and sounds of this one. Director Jennifer Beck, Colin Schmidt, Megan Sherrick, Jonathan Young on camera, and thank you for watching. One more time, our final 14 to 13 Lima Central Catholic on top of Delphus St. John's. For Dave Bowen and our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long, everyone, from Lima.